When I was a child, I didn't like eating green stuff, and I didn't know how to swim. So needless to say, it feels a bit surreal uh, that I'm up here talking to you about my work today as an ocean farmer and how that relates to the food crisis. So you see, Jamaica relies heavily on food imports, so much more than what it exports, and the food that does stay within the island can face significant supply chain issues. To make matters worse, most of the farming practices explored are outdated and inefficient. In fact, over 90% of fertilizer coming from Russia, sanctions against Russia have meant that farm efficiency has decreased even more at a time when the cost of animal feed has also gone up. That means there is less food and it's more expensive overall. A May 2023 study by the United Nations found that half of Jamaicans reported either skipping meals or intentionally eating less due to food insecurity. 10% of Jamaicans will go at least one day a week without eating at all. When I was looking to start a new company, after moving away from the tech space, I knew I wanted to start something that would impact my neighbors. Of all the things I looked into, seaweed kept popping up again and again. As a food store, seaweed itself is nutritionally dense, which is great. But what I found particularly exciting about seaweed is that growing operations themselves are doing more important work for the climate for mitigation and restoration that at scale could be enormously impactful. While a lot of modern agriculture creates carbon emissions and can damage land, ocean farms remove carbon, restore biodiversity, and offer enhanced protection to shorelines experiencing storms, which we know will increase in frequency, intensity, and duration. In the past, food crises may have been seen in isolation, but the food crisis problems we face and see today and those of the future are political, not supply-based. Our planet and people have the capacity to provide for everyone, but climate change and political problems create and exacerbate inequality when it comes to accessing food. That's why it's critical to find community-oriented food solutions. In the case of Key Farms, we're excited to be able to offer the most vulnerable employment, opportunities to advance themselves, and a food source that goes to our community. We do this by training fisher folk how to set up and run their own ocean farms so that they can sell their biomass back to us or to local consumers. Aside from seaweed, we're able to grow other things like oysters, sea cucumbers, seagrass, and conch. This allows them to receive consistent monthly income while providing us at Key Farms consistent yields of biomass. So far, we've been able to do this with over 30 fisher folk. With our combined efforts, we've been able to remove about one ton of carbon from the environment. And in three years, at scale, we'll be able to remove close to two million annually. And that's about 400,000 tons of seaweed that can easily fill this room. And so, for seaweed, we're here we are able to take the combined biomass and convert it into various environmentally impactful products along the value chain. And I'm thrilled to have developed a modular system of machines and protocols that can be adapted and deployed throughout the Caribbean community and hopefully throughout the rest of the small island developing states <laughs> to support and protect people and the environment. And so it's been great talking with you today. I'm Nicholas Key, and I'm the CEO <laughs> of Key Farms. And people, it would be remiss of me to say, I still don't know how to swim. <laughs>